Hello. Hi. Oh wow, you guys have a lot of cameras. Hi, I'm Sofia Coppola. I'm a filmmaker and I'm excited to answer questions from friends and I don't know who. This is so fun, I've never done this. Hi, Sophia. I have a question. When you're feeling uninspired, where do you turn to? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's so fun to see my surprise interviewers. I don't really have a formula, but um, looking at photo books, I always get ideas from photography that I like and, and images. I have, um, yeah, stacks of like favorite books that I look through. Hey, Sophia, uh, I was wondering what is the best book that you've ever read or, or perhaps maybe the, the top three reads from your lifetime? Lots of love. Oh, it's so fun to see everyone. The best experiences I've had of reading books are probably like cl classics from when I was younger. Anna Karenina is one of my favorite books, one that you couldn't put down. Of Human Bondage, Somerset Maugham of Human Bondage. I always loved kind of obsessive, tragic love stories. I love recently, um, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. She's a stage mother and it's her memoir and it's she had a really hard time. She takes this kind of abusive childhood and turns it into expression of, of how she how she survived that. So that was really touching. Hi, Sophia. I'm Hunter, and I was curious, as someone who's really inspired by music myself, and I know music is a really big part of your work, at what point in the filmmaking process do you start bringing music in? Like, is it when you're writing and storyboarding at the beginning, or do you start to think about songs and music in post-production or in the editing room? Thank you. I think when I'm starting a film project, I start to look at images, photographs, and listen to music. And usually the music I'm listening to when I'm writing the script ends up um, creeping into the movie, and it just kind of helps me find what the, the mood of it is. And I remember when I was writing The Virgin Suicides, I was listening to Air's first album. And then as I was listening to it, I thought, oh, this, this feels really like in the mood of of, um, of the story, or it, it just felt connected to it. So then I asked them if they would do um, a score. Oh, wow, I didn't recognize Chase. Hi, oh. Sophia, it's Chase. I want to know if there's a time in your life that you keep on coming back to for inspiration. And I also want to know what your most treasured piece of clothing is. I can't, I mean, I feel like it's always connected to child, childhood, probably because that's when you're the most free and creative. And I heard Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order last night. It always connects me with being a teenager. And I think as a teenager, you have time to just sit around and listen to music and daydream where when you become an adult, you're busy and you have to be productive. I think I love clothes too much to have one <laughs> treasured piece of clothing. I have a beautiful um, black Chanel tweed suit that I wore in Cannes um, for Beguiled. I think that's probably my most treasured piece of clothing. Hi, Sophia. It's Stephen and... Gillian. From New Order. <laughs> uh, we've got a question wow. for I've got a question for you. When you're making a film, do you decide what the music is going to be mm. before you start? Or how, do you have an idea of what you're going to use? And do you have a playlist for your characters? Oh, that's so cool. I love New Order. And in Marie Antoinette um, ceremony, is like, it just it just adds so much to it. And it has so much emotion to me. In Priscilla's book, she talks about Venus, listening to um, Frankie Avalon's Venus in the diner when she first met Elvis's friend. And so there were a few references of music in her book. And so I started listening to those. I loved girl groups when I was growing up. I loved, you know, like the Barnett's and, and those. So that, that was something I could connect with from that era that I really loved. I asked um, my husband's band Phoenix if they would, you know, help me when I was working early on on the script. The Phoenix guys made a big playlist and we would, we would all add stuff to it on Spotify. We put it on Spotify. You can, you can, it's like the Priscilla inspiration playlist. It's, so it's some soundtrack and then it's just stuff we were listening to. I gave that to Kaylee too, so she could just get into what we were listening to. Hi, Queen. Um, I was wondering how you cultivate a good vibe on set. I've heard you have amazing sets. So how do you create that and how do you keep it going throughout the shoot? It's really important to me to have a good atmosphere on set. And um, I think it's just like hosting people for a party. It's the same thing. I, um, I try to have nice music in the morning and make sure everyone comfortable and there's no yelling on my set. I don't think people work well under stressful environments, so I just try to keep it 
a nice place to be. And I, I grew up on my dad's sets, and I think I learned that from him to, um, you know, make everyone feel included and have a family atmosphere. We had a pickleball court on my last set, which was so fun. And when everyone would get stressed out, we'd go play at lunch. So filmmaking should be fun and playful, and you want people to feel um, comfortable to express themselves. Oh, wow. Hi, Sophia. So in my opinion, you make the best films about teenage girls. Uh, I was wondering what other directors do you like that you think do teenage girls justice in the same way that you do? Oh, that's nice to hear. I remember being in Tokyo with Coco as a baby, and it's fun to see you as a grown grown person. But the teenage girl experience, I feel like um, it's always cringy when it's not done right. And I remember when I was growing up, they would always have like actors in their 30s playing teenagers. So it's a pet peeve of mine. And I was so relieved that Kaylee Sweeney could play such a young age as someone in her 20s. I feel Jane Campion is someone that really, um, I always felt got got that right. And I, I felt like I could relate to. So her work is so important to me. I, mean, I grew up with John Hughes movies, which I know are problematic, but I grew up with those and I felt like Oh, he understands teenagers in a way that I, I could connect to. Molly Ringwald and Sixteen Candles um, really felt like a teenager. And I'm excited I meet so many young women nowadays that are directors, so I, I, um, I can't wait to see a whole new slew of, of that uh, experience. Oh, wow. Hi, Sophia. I'd really love to know about your work with actors, all the actors that you work with. They just project this presence. And I'd like to know where it all begins, how you start to share what you're looking for with them and you know, what sort of prompts that you give them and you process really. I love how Jane looks like she's like shot on 16 millimeter. Wow, well that's such a cool question to get from Jane because I think she's so great at how she works with actors. I would like to ask her the same question. I don't know, it's very mysterious, but I guess we start by you know talking about the feeling of the story and what's important to me and the characters. Usually I do rehearsals where we spend time like as the characters in the setting. It was somewhere, Stephen Dorff and Elle, he would take her to go do Color Me Mine ceramics and get ice cream and like do things so that when we started filming, they started to have that relationship of, um, of father and daughter. And Jacob already hung out with his gang of the Memphis Mafia guys, so they went out and did stuff together. And and um, and I told him to be bossy with them. And in Virgin Suicides, they they made meals, they made lunch in the in the house, and had to stay in character. So we do a lot of things like that. And then when we're filming, it's just um, I kind of let the actors do their thing. We we block it out, and then you know, try to give feedback as to um, what I had in mind. But usually by then you're on the same page, pretty much. Oh, wow. Hi, Sophia. Um, my question to you is, what character from a book or film did you relate to the most growing up? Love you. The character I most related to as a kid from books is Eloise at the Plaza. She grew up in a hotel and had adventures. We stayed in a lot of hotels when I was growing up because my parents would take us uh, on location for films all over. I know I probably can't ever make a movie again in a hotel because I've done it too much, but I do love a hotel. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Are there any childhood obsessions that have made their way into your work? I always loved fashion and clothes um, and photography. You're kind of creating world, worlds and environments, so I think all those things are part of my work now. What was the first movie that you remember seeing in a the theater? I remember seeing Bugsy Malone as a kid, and um, I was totally blown away. I remember Scott Bayo was really cute, but just all these little kids dressed up as grown-ups. Bugsy Malone is one of my favorite movies. Hi, Sophia. What's the one movie that changed your life or inspired you to want to make movies? That's fun to see Kim. Um, I can't think of one movie. There were so many movies being watched at our home, and so I got to see so much. But I think as a teenager, seeing Breathless, I still reference it when I'm thinking about where to put the camera and the, the intimacy between them and the kind of cool casualness about it made a big impact on me. If you were to turn somewhere into a play and the concept of the play was that it could only be in one room, what room would you set somewhere at the play? That's a good idea. Um, probably in their um, hotel suite, the set 
decoration changes. I think it starts empty and then it gets more stuff around and sort of is a reflection of his his state. So I think I think it could maybe work as a play. That's not a lot of dialogue. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. The question I have for you is: Are you surrounded by the art you love and the art that interests you, and are you a collector? Uh, it's so cool to see Joanne Kellis because um, I love her photography. My mom um, encouraged me to collect photography when I was younger. I have Elizabeth Payton painting that I love and a Richard Prince cowboy and photographs from Eggleston and Lee Freelander and my, some of my favorite people. And I and I wanted to get a Joanne Kellis print, so I, I, that's one thing that I would love. I'm happy to fill the walls around me with images that I love. Sophia. I you know so well how to convey the inner feelings of few girls and their journey. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. I just do stories that I connect to the characters, mostly girls and women I, I connect to because that experience is, you know, something that I know about. And also working with actresses, there are certain actresses that are able to convey that. I thought Kaylee Spaney is really good at, in Priscilla being able to show her emotional state with just um, without saying anything and just with her face and, and Kirsten and Elle. So it's also so much of the sensitive actresses that can um, convey that. Hi, Sophia. I'm in the bathroom of the Academy Gala and I walk in in front of you, which reminded me that I had to record this question for you. This is a tough one and I'm very curious for your response. How should a woman be? Oh, I feel like however they want to be, there's so many different ways to be. I always appreciate when someone is real, but then there's fun and artificiality too, and the fun of, of kind of reinventing yourself and who you want to be that day, I guess. <laughs> Do my answers conflict each other? That's how, that's the human condition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, that was so fun. Thank you.